Now here's a fact lost to history. Almost no one, and I mean no one at MTV back in July of 1981, wanted that to be the first video on the channel. It's too obvious, they said. But the guys at the top said, no, 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 we have to do something symbolic. This song is symbolic, so we're going to play it. Here's another bit of history. What was the second video shown on MTV? It was You'd Better Run by Pat Benatar. And the third? She Won't Dance With Me from Rod Stewart. Rod was actually the guy who made MTV possible. When the channel launched, they only had access to about 250 videos, and 30 of them were by Rod Stewart. The first video played on Much Music when it debuted on August 31st, 1984, was an experimental animated film from the 1920s. The first proper video was The Enemy Within from Rush. Let me offer up some various secrets from the history of the music video. You know that famous wine, I Want My MTV? That was taken almost directly from a campaign for a breakfast cereal in 1956 in which a kid keeps crying, I want my Mapo, Mapo being the name of the cereal. In the 1980s, video production budgets exploded once the record labels realized that a good video helped sell records. The money wasn't always spent wisely. Uh, Drugs were often buried in the budget under catering. And when hair metal became big, some of the budget, and I'm not making this up, some of the budget went to hair plugs, toupees, and hair extensions. There were a lot of prematurely bald guys who got to keep their hair because of a generous video budget. There's a myth that Michael Jackson's Billie Jean was the first video by a black performer on MTV. Not true. The truth is that Musical Youth and Pass the Duchy was first. If you look very carefully at Prince's video for Raspberry Beret, you'll spot a guy in the background named Pat Smear. Pat would later join Nirvana and the Foo Fighters as an additional guitarist. David Fincher, the guy who directed Fight Club and won an Academy Award for The Social Network, started out as a music video director. Same thing with Michael Bay, the guy behind the Transformers movies. And why did Pearl Jam stop making videos after Jeremy from the 10 album? It was an issue over editing. In the original version of the song, which, by the way, is based on the true story of Jeremy Dell of Richardson, Texas, who killed himself in front of his classmates with a handgun, in that video, we actually see the Jeremy character put the gun in his mouth and pull the trigger. MTV refused to allow that, so they sent the video back to be reshot and re-edited. This enraged Eddie Vedder, which helps explain part of his performance that you see in the video. He hated the idea of the video being censored. And after that, he and the band said, that's it, no more videos. Weirdly, though, the version that did air worked. Before the Jeremy video, Pearl Jam had sold about 500,000 records. Shortly after it appeared, they had sold 5 million records. 